Good day and welcome to SH Kaiser and Company Limited earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in a listen only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. To gain assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your touchdown phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anup Pujari from CBR India. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us on SH Kailkar and Company Limited's Q4 and FY20 earnings conference call. We have with us Mr. Kedar Vaze, full-time director and CEO, Mr. B. Ramakrishnan, head strategy, and Mr. Shrikant Nate, VP and Group CFO of the company. We would like to begin the call with opening remarks from the management, following which we'll have the forum open for a question and answer session. Before we start, I would like to point out that some statements made in today's call may be forward-looking in nature, and a disclaimer to this effect has been inscribed in the earnings presentation shared with you earlier. I would now like to invite Mr. Kedar Vaze to make his opening remarks. Thank you, Anup. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us on our earnings conference call discuss the operating and financial results for the fourth quarter. The full year ended March 31st, 2020. I will be covering the quarterly business highlights and financial performance for the quarter, post which we will open the forum for your questions and suggestions. To begin the, we began the fourth quarter on an encouraging note, witnessing increased demand and improved traction in all our business segments in terms of inquiries, leads, especially from the mid and large size FMCG companies. This led to a solid pickup in the business momentum the months of January and February. However, a countrywide lockdown and restrictions in the last 10 days of March changed our operating trajectory and moderated sales during the quarter. On a consolidated basis, our revenue from operations stood steady at 269.8 crores in quarter 4 FY20 and for the year FY20, it was 1105 crores, higher by 6% year on year. The company saw several operational challenges due to COVID led lockdown in March and April. While we did not witness any significant impact on the existing order backlog from the customers, our execution during the period was severely impacted due to plant closures and logistic issues. As per our assessment, the revenue impact owing to the lockdown last 10 days of March roughly translates to around 30 crores of revenue. Existed for the same, we believe we would have been largely on track to deliver our performance as per our internal expectations for the quarter. Despite the challenging environment, gross margins during the quarter improved to around 44% and for the full year to 43%. While the reported fat during the quarter stood at 12 crores, Existed for the impact of COVID, our revenue and EBITDA would have registered around a PAT of 22 crores as per our assessment. Cash profit for the year stood at strong 122.7 crores and would have been roughly 10 crores higher without the COVID disruption. In the fragrance division, we are currently witnessing good demand and healthy buildup of order pipelines of categories such as household products, detergents, sanitizers, soap and personal wash are uh, higher than the average of the previous years. Mm -hmm. Our latest ad category addition, industrial fragrance, is also tracking a healthy progress. We reported increased contributions from industrial fragrance in quarter four and full year 20. The new products we have introduced in the market have been well received and we expect to deliver improving contributions from this division in the years to come. Mm -hmm. Our flavor business also reported steady performance during quarter four and full year 20, after taking into account the impact of the COVID-19 on this segment. I would also like to update you on the encouraging performance reported by CFS, our Italian joint venture, despite a challenging operating environment in Europe. During the January-March quarter, revenues from the core fragrance segment improved by 13.5% year-on-year. Gross margins in this segment stood stronger at 54.7%, higher by 580 BPS year-on-year, driven by lower raw material prices. 
I'm also happy to share that despite the lockdown in Italy, we have witnessed steady sales in the month of April and also in March. Going forward, we expect to deliver a healthy performance from CFR in the quarters ahead. Let me now discuss the COVID-19 pandemic and its impact on our company's operations. From January 2020, the outbreak of this pandemic has been disrupting global economies and markets. As discussed in a previous earning call, we did not see any major impact on our raw material basket owing to supply chains in China. However, the nationwide lockdown in domestic markets from March 22nd uh, to May 17th significantly affected our business activities. Our priority during this challenging operating environment was to maintain and secure our operations while also ensuring safety and well-being of our employees and business partners. Further, we were focused on serving all our customers, especially since we form an important part of the FMCG supply chain. On the operational front, we took all recommended precautionary measures across our business operations and temporarily closed operations at our corporate office in Mumbai and implemented work from home. In line with the government directives, we had also temporarily suspended manufacturing operations across all our manufacturing facilities in India at Vashivli, Mulum, Wapi and Mahal for roughly 35 odd days. While the company faced supply chain disruption and labor management issues during the lockdown in March and April, the situation on the ground is certainly improving now. Pursuant to the requisite government approvals, we have resumed our operations in the facilities from 27th April onwards. While the units are operating at low utilization levels, we are undertaking all precautionary measures and ensuring highest safety standards across all manufacturing sites. As I mentioned earlier, prior to the lockdown, we are seeing increased business wins and engagement with existing and new FMCG customers. I'm happy to share that our contribution from business wins both from existing and new customers, stood at around 5% during the FY20. While it may seem optically low to you, we are enthused by such figures and it provides a multi-year growth visibility to our business. Typically, such business wins from existing and new customers account for a small revenue contribution in the first year of operations. But as our customers' end products mature in the market, the revenue contribution for these products keeps increasing. This is generally over a period of 2-3 years of past growth before the business product stabilizes. So while we are seeing a healthy uptick in business wins, positive impact on our business performance is expected on a longer term basis. Furthermore, we are also encouraged that our company has been winning in 1 to 4 to 5 client weeks over the years. And as the macro situation normalizes, we anticipate this trend to continue going forward. Fundamentally, the company's operations continue to be strong and stable. We are also seeing increased contribution from our mid and large size FMCG customers. The contribution from smaller customers post GST and demonetization has reduced and currently contributes less than 10% of our total revenues. I would, however, like to state here that in SHK's core DNA, that we would work with all customers, small and big. While the small customers have been impacted over the years owing to various issues, we do anticipate many of them coming back in some form and modifying their product mix in the next three to five years. In addition, we are also seeing the growing influence of e-commerce platforms and how they have been challenging the traditional brick and mortar stores. These growing e-commerce platforms are being increasingly and successfully leveraged by our smaller consumer segment entrepreneurs to provide customized products across the domestic market. We believe this presents another set of opportunity for us to build engagement and service these small entrepreneurs. On the financial position as an organization, we are realizing our cost optimization strategies and deploying working capital measures to conserve cash flow and ensure steady profitability during this extraordinary situation. I'm happy to share that we reported healthy cash flows of operations during the year of rupees 205 crores, owing to improvements in total working capital cycle. This enabled us to reduce our net debt position on 31st March 2020 to less than 300, 299 crores as compared to 400 crores in the end of September 30th, 2019. This notable reduction in debt was achieved after accomplishing a buyback in interim period. 
I would also like to share here that our net debt position as on 22nd May is below the 31st March 2020 level, which further strengthens the company as we go into the COVID situation. Furthermore, we hold negligible term loans, and most of the company's debt is towards working capital. Even for the 2020 year, we do not foresee major capex outflow except for the CFS acquisition. We expect maintenance capex during the year to be less than 20 crores, and anticipate this outflow to remain amidst this range on a sustainable basis going forward. On the whole, we have a strong balance sheet. Fairly robust liquidity and cash flow position will help us tide over these disorderly times. Our long-term focus remains to on making, marking a sustainable improvement in our return ratios as 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 we go along. As we look ahead, the fragrance and flavor industry remains a critical part of the FMCG industry. We are confident of the industry's resilience and its growth prospects, and it would be our endeavor to sustainably outperform the industry growth. On the back of our leadership position, comprehensive product portfolio, diverse customer base, repeat business in many existing and new customers. We are presenting ourselves as a reliable partner to all customers and continue to work with them to ensure smooth deliveries and supplies in this challenging operating environment. We are further encouraged that we hold adequate inventories to allow us to service customers in the months ahead. But there is limited visibility on when the situation will normalize. We remain confident of our growth prospects and believe that in a normalized operating environment, we should be able to deliver healthy performance as as things improve. With this, I would now request the moderator to open the forum for any questions or suggestions that you may have. Sure, sir. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchscreen telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are expected to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue is running. Anyone who wishes to ask a question at this time, then please press star and one. First question is from the line of Dhruv Bimracha from RKS Alive. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, good morning, sir. Uh, I am attending the company call for the first time. Uh, can you please explain me in detail uh, how the raw material sourcing takes place for your company? Raw material procurement. Uh, yeah, how does the raw material procurement work? What are your main raw materials, and what are the countries that you use to procure them? So uh, we buy uh, raw material from over 200 uh, different uh, vendors in over 60 different countries. There is a raw material coming from uh, about 50% of our raw material is uh, domestically sourced. 50% okay. is imported, and our feedstocks are very varied from petroleum chemicals to uh, turpentine, which is uh, uh, actually a derivative of the wood or paper industry. And then uh, citrus terpenes, which come from uh, orange juice uh, as a byproduct. So our okay. feedstocks are largely uh, varied from mm-hmm. different parts of the world. Okay. And uh, then uh, 25% of our volume, 40% uh, roughly of our value is specific specific herbs, spices, uh, and uh, uh, flowers, uh, fruits, uh, extracts, which are uh, made across the world. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, can you tell me what is the organized and unorganized uh, market in the flavor and fragrance chemical industry? Uh, I do not have the latest numbers, but uh, okay. two years ago our estimate was that there would be approximately 30% in the unorganized market in the flavor and fragrance, and maybe a uh, 35% in flavor and 25% in fragrance. Okay, and what would be your market share in the total industry as percent of organized and as percent of total? If I have the numbers, so uh, as a percentage of the total industry fragrance and flavor, we would be around 13 percent of the market share. 13 percent of the market share. In around 20 percent market share on the fragrance. 20 percent in the fragrance side. Yeah. Okay. Okay, sir. I'll come back in the queue if I have any. 
Thank you. Any participants who wish to ask a question at this time, then please press star and one. The next question is from the line of SM Rajan as an investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning, sir. Yeah, I just have a couple of questions. One is, can you tell me about your operations in China of your acquisition which you did last year? And number two, the which segment do you see maximum growth uh, going forward? For example, hand sanitizer is something which is like booming in geometric progression. So, is there chance for something like business in it? Is, is, uh, is, are there opportunities because of the COVID? in terms of new segments uh, being created. And third is if you, I mean, I know you may not like to answer, but in terms of your supplies to SMCG companies like Rectate or, you know, or HUL, et cetera, are we in the uh, in the segment, I mean, for example, love and care of Hindustan liver, which is the latest uh, nice smelling detergent, you know? I mean, are we there in that segment at all? Thank you. So I think uh, I will answer the second question first. Uh, we have been continuously working with the global MNC on uh, various uh, products. Uh, although our market share in their portfolio is quite small, we are uh, approved vendors with many of them. The COVID has also given us a unique opportunity because many of the global global MNCs are also looking for uh, more uh, local or reliable suppliers in addition to their global vendors. So this is an opportunity for us in the COVID environment to also look at businesses from the larger global MNC FMCG players. Uh, to answer your first question, we do not see any new segments as such uh, coming or emerging out of COVID. There is a whole host of new product launches within the existing personal wash, sanitizer and duty uh, care products. So there are definitely a huge number of uh, products and greater uh, sales. Uh, if you look at the general trend of what has been in the Italian market through our CFF subsidiary, as Italy was earlier in the uh, COVID uh, transition or COVID pandemic, uh, we see that uh, the typical products and sanitizers and cleaning and cleaning uh, multi-purpose cleaners, all of these products have grown uh, dramatically, almost in uh, jump of 50% in March and early part of April. And it will end up with a 10 to 12% increase in these product ranges in the, for the full year. We see a similar thing happening in the Indian context. Uh, our market share in fragrances on the personal wash, fabric uh, detergent, and cleaning products in general will uh, go up. Uh, as a percentage of our total sale and also as a market share of the uh, total uh, business. Uh, some of the uh, higher premium products uh, in terms of fine fragrance after these markets will be muted for the time being. And as and when the uh, general uh, markets uh, open uh, all over the country and in the different parts of the world, this uh, business will resume uh, to, I think, normal levels. So on the Overall basis, I think there will be a 10 to 12 percent increase in the uh, personal wash, sanitizer, uh, cleaning products in general, and the remaining sectors will remain at the same level as last year. And about China, please. So China, uh, we have a factory in China which has been operating throughout this uh, pandemic with no disruption. Uh, we don't see anything specifically negative or positive out of uh, China, I think uh, our uh, our view is that there might be some disturbances or some additional costs uh, based on duties or uh, logistics uh, from China. Uh, so we are taking adequate stocks uh, in domestic uh, warehouses for products coming out of China for us uh, in the near future. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of VP Rajesh from Banyan Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my first question was uh, regarding our um, business that is coming out of India. So what percentage of the uh, total revenue is uh, from the clients based in India? Roughly 
50% of our total revenue is based on clients' uh, consumption in India. We also have revenues overseas for clients which are based in India, but the consumption of clients in India is roughly 50% of our business. Okay. And then out of that 50%, um, how much is coming from uh, MNCs here uh, versus the domestic uh, FMCG companies or some of the smaller FMCG companies that you um, uh, alluded to earlier? So our market share in the global MNC is very small. It will be a small digit, 1-2% of our total sale. So 1% or 2% of our total sale of 1,100 files is from the MNC based in India, is it? That's correct. Okay. And what percentage of our revenue would be from um, these smaller FMCG companies, however you may define them, meaning uh, perhaps they are less than 100 crore or uh, 200 crore of revenues. Um, no, so uh, if you can just give some more color on that. Broad picture that we have, uh, like uh, we are very strong in the middle segment. We have very limited market share owing to global uh, global vendor policies with the global uh, MNC FMCGs like uh, Unilever or others that you mentioned. Uh, we are very strong with the domestic FMCG companies uh, across the board, uh, which contribute uh, roughly 40% of our uh, sales in the uh, fragrance side and uh, maybe around 30% to 40% of our sales in the flavor side as well. Uh, so we are very strong in the mid-size uh, of the domestic FMCG players, the large and small, uh, like everybody that you would know, Budrej, Imami, Mariko, Dabar, uh, and so on and so forth. All the uh, well-known uh, FMCG players within the country are uh, large clients for us and we continue to support their growth and their business through the years. We also have a large diverse client base of roughly 2,000 plus clients across the country and across the various geographies where we operate in 60 countries where uh, we are supplier to the mid-sized and smaller uh, FMCG companies for various products. So in India, if you were to just give a little bit more color, um, what percentage of our revenue is coming from these smaller FMCG companies? And how do you define the small uh, in, in the way you segment the market? So, uh, I mean, it's, it's a difficult, uh, so there is no like, a, it's a continuum, so there is no like a specific slab or band. We typically look at uh, our uh, potential sales of roughly uh, 10 to 20 lakhs uh, annualized basis as the uh, starting point. It also a little bit depends on which segment. So there are some segments which are smaller, some segments which are bigger. So in a personal wash soap, uh, we would look at a slightly higher number as a large client and small client. So category by category, it differs. But on an average, customers below potential uh, buying of fragrance or flavor, 10 lakh, we define as the small customers. Anywhere between 10 lakh to around 1 crore are the mid size customers and companies which are buying more than 1 crore uh, per annum of fragrance or flavor would typically be uh, the large brand companies. I see. Our uh, that's very helpful. And uh, how, uh, how much is the that would come from, let's say, your top 10 uh, clients across uh, both categories as well as across India and the globe? Again. Uh, what would be the percentage revenue from your top 10 customers um, out of revenue of, you know, 100, uh, sorry, 1,105 crores? Uh, what would be the um, revenue contribution from top 10 customers? Roughly 20% or 25% of our total revenue. Okay, okay. And then uh, the widely distributed, diversified portfolio of customers and products. Correct, correct. And then just one more question on the customer side. Uh, what has been the challenge in penetrating the uh, domestic uh, MNCs? Uh, or what I mean is the MNCs which are, you know, based here, for example, your HULs or your uh, Nestle and all those sorts of companies. Uh, so no challenge. We are working with them. We are continuously uh, working on their briefs and uh, potential business. So it's a matter of time before uh, we get business from them as well. Okay. 
And uh, for the CFF, uh, you were planning to buy back the remaining portion. So uh, what's the plan on that side? So at the moment, uh, I mean, you can see the results even through the COVID have been uh, very good. So they are operating a strong company and we are uh, very much inclined to complete the uh, remaining balance 49% acquisition uh, as soon as possible. Uh, with the COVID challenges, I think uh, we will work out the timelines how to uh, execute the transactions and uh, put in the uh, paperwork. But uh, we are keen, uh, we would have, uh, we had indicated that second half of this financial, we would be closing the transaction. We are, the, we were hit in terms of the uh, COVID uh, situation in the uh, Italy uh, around February, and we, we uh, ended up uh, with uh, postponing that uh, to a later date. But we are keen to go ahead and uh, integrate that business with our business as soon as possible. In addition, it gives us a BCP uh, business risk management tool for many of our customers in the Middle East and Africa that we could supply from Italy in case of a production uh, stoppage in India uh, as, as we have witnessed in April. So we are keen to have a site outside India to be able to uh, face uh, any emergency uh, supply situation. Okay. And just a couple of uh, numbers related questions. Um, your other income dropped quite dramatically uh, both for this quarter as well as for the year. Um, so if you can just uh, provide some commentary around that. If you can, do you want to answer that? Hello? Yes, she can. Am I so uh, I assume you are comparing with last year, and uh, last year there were uh, write backs of expense provision which were no longer required, uh, which is why last year number was higher. Uh, as we go along, we now continue to have normal composition, which is the export incentives, some scrap revenue, and uh, the forex gain, etc. Okay. And uh, last year you had written off, uh, I think, 23 crores of uh, intangibles. Um, uh, so is there a equivalent number this year uh, corresponding to that? And was it uh, in the depreciation amortization time last year? Era, do you want me to take it? Or you yeah, want yes, to answer it. So, uh, uh, this year also there is approximately the same uh, value of the amortization. This is uh, the R&D which is capitalized and uh, uh, then uh, it is written off following the systematic review of uh, those projects resulting into revenues. Uh, these are uh, uh, categorized into other expenses uh, following the uh, counting regulation. Thank you. Mr. Rajesh, we request you to join the question to for any follow up as we have travel got us in for that one. Okay. All right. Thank you. We move to the next question that is from the line of Manish Gupta from Solidarity Investment. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I have two questions. The first one is uh, can you uh, please describe your competitive set and you know what uh, differentiate uh, different players from each other in this industry. And the second one is, could you explain the strategic rationale of the overseas acquisitions that you have done? So let me uh, start with the first question. Uh, we have been in this business for well over 90 years. Uh, I am personally in the same family as the founding family and we have been technically the people who have been building uh, fragrances and flavors for well over 90 years. Uh, the business of fragrance and flavors, like many other businesses which are related to people consumption, follows trends and follows liking and consumer liking and preferences. So the longer you are in the business, the more data you have, the more experience you have, the more prototypes you have developed, you have a better uh, understanding of the consumer tastes and consumer trends and you are better placed to make the products for the future. So this is why uh, 
we have been around we have been working in these markets for long periods of time we have a strong library of product development we have a continual r&d spend of well over 3% many years in a, in a row so we have uh, the basis to compete with our knowledge with our uh, r&d uh, which has been uh, continual r&d so this is sort of there is r&d uh, where you you need to spend money and there is r&d where you need to spend the time so this peculiar uh, characteristic of our industry where uh, as you have data over more periods of time more prototypes or uh, more trends you can better uh, better select uh, the products and trends for the future so this is our strength understanding of the consumers we are also one of the uh, the uh, fragrance companies that uh, 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 talks or even the same uh, principle applies on the flavors, which works with the small and large customers alike. So, from a sort of taking a bit from the HSBC tagline of the world's local bank, we are the uh, local uh, developer of uh, fragrance and flavors. So we understand local consumption, we understand local consumer taste better than the uh, large global companies. and uh, we have global size and scale from our operations and quality control and uh, service levels so we we combine the best of global service uh, standards with local consumer understandings this is our usp uh, in view uh, in your discussion on the global acquisition so we have done two uh, three global acquisitions the first acquisition was done 10 12 years ago when we acquired a company called pfw Yeah, which was manufacturer of aroma ingredient and they had a strong pipeline of r&d for new molecules which is the starting science behind the uh, fragrance and flavors uh, we have acquired that 10 years ago last year uh, and half back we have set up the plants in mahad uh, we have acquired a company in china anuni which is also in the similar manufacturing base and close to netherlands operating base so this product lines were uh, basically manufactured in europe but sold on a global basis including in india and china and we thought it is uh, beneficial to operate the manufacturing in a area of lower cost than uh, or continue to operate in the netherlands so that uh, acquisition was largely in terms of our global uh, ingredient supply chain and the research around the basic ingredients Uh, both the Netherlands acquisition and our recent acquisition last year on uh, in China were to support and strengthen our supply chain on the raw material position. We we have now acquired uh, CSS in Italy. So if you look at uh, our uh, fragrance or flavor uh, growth and investment uh, method, we normally look at a market. We have R and D exposure. We uh, send market. Uh, studies on the market and then we invest to manufacture and produce uh, in those markets so we have done that for southeast asia middle east and we have been operating in these markets for well over uh, 40 years uh, and uh, recently uh, after that we when we were moving the netherlands factory out we already have r&d people and management team in the netherlands plus uh, I, i believe that overall in the longer run Uh, European business and uh, particularly South of Europe businesses are where the uh, new trends in the global fragrance markets uh, are beginning. So we are now uh, well placed to operate in the uh, South of France with the Italian acquisition and keep abreast of what is the uh, global trends in uh, fragrance and in more in particular. So it helps us to. Uh, sell and compete in the european markets and to keep updated on the latest trends in the global fragrance industry thank you thank you the next question is from the line of sir avnand vishwanathan from unify capital please go ahead hello uh, thanks for taking my question uh, couple of questions Uh, so you had mentioned that uh, the uh, fixed assets, uh, the the investment required in fixed assets this year would be uh, to the tune of 21 crores. And uh, so, given that, I want to understand what is the current level of uh, capacity utilization. So, if we, if we were to see your uh, last five years, 
uh, uh, fixed assets uh, additions uh, have almost doubled, but the revenue in revenue terms and even operating profit terms, um, it has more behaved like sidewards. So can you just take us through the current level of capacity utilization and uh, uh, and and how long uh, before that we need to create more capacity? So in terms of capacity with our last investments in the Netherlands and uh, in the Mar factory and uh, relocating the Netherlands operations, we have uh, primarily completed our cycle of investments for the phase of growth. Uh, we don't foresee any real uh, large capex uh, required for the uh, continuation of our current business. Uh, we will look at small capex as additional uh, capacity enhancement is required, but by and large our capacities are in place. Uh, at none of the plants, so all of the business segments, our current capacity is around the 50% to 60% level on on demand, what is the current demand. Uh, so we have enough headroom across the uh, divisions and factories to uh, uh, continue to increase our revenue without any large uh, capex requirements. Okay, so I mean, uh, so the, the CFF uh, Italian uh, capacities and the Indian capacities are they for uh, similar products or uh, they are no C products? CFF capacity is in uh, fragrance formulations and that is specific to the uh, European market. We are not uh, depending on that capacity for the Asia, Africa, Southeast Asia markets. We have. Two similar plants in India catering to these demands uh, in Middle East, Africa, Indian subcontinent, and Southeast Asia. So, to uh, CFF is the next step uh, to cover the European as market as a geography. Uh, we have the Chinese uh, operations as well, uh, which we have. So, right now our span of operations is between uh, kind of uh, Middle East, India subcontinent, and Southeast Asia as our established market where we have market presence and we are continuing for the last 25 plus years. Europe and China are additional markets where we will start to develop some marketing and sales. Okay. So even in, uh, from a European market perspective, the CFF Italian capacities are sufficient for a few more years? Yes, we have uh, last year invested in additional production capacities in CFF as well in uh, anticipation of the integration. So we have enough capacity. Uh, all the plants in terms of business segments are not exceeding 55-60% of their capacity at a maximum. For the fragrance uh, domestic market and flavor domestic market, we are even at a lower utilization level because we see we have invested heavily in uh, kind of large capacity early in the uh, cycle. And this R&D uh, expenditure that you had uh, hinting, is it all uh, charged through the p and account or uh, some of it is uh, capitalized? Uh, so since uh, 2015 in the new accounting standard, we have been uh, charging some, uh, uh, capitalizing some of the lo longer term projects and uh, charging of the uh, immediate projects to expenses. Uh, as we speak, it's uh, pretty much a steady state. So every year, uh, by and large, the same. Uh, if I look at my cash expenses or I look at my expenses in the uh, PNL, they are more or less the same, because there is a net effect of some being capitalized and some being written off from the earlier year, which did not materialize or was started to kind of amortization. So net result of the two is uh, pretty neutral. So there is no additional. Uh, things being charged off to the uh, balance sheet uh, in a year-on-year -year basis. Okay, understood. And one more, just one more question. What would be our uh, financial outgo if we had to buy this 49% stake, remaining stake, in CFF Italy? So we are uh, negotiating with them, but uh, as of the last uh, discussion, uh, we had uh, roughly 16 million euros of uh, outlay planned. Okay. Fine, sir. All the best. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Alpesh Tatar from Mobile Alosa Financial. Please call. Mm. Thank you for taking up my question, sir. Uh, so the first question uh, is on the CSF only. So in terms of uh, revenue and EBITDA margin, how was the performance for FI20? 
and uh, uh, and uh, how is the cross selling opportunity doing uh, there so far so you know uh, the cff is good at you know uh, fine fragrances and subject care so are there a pot- any opportunities that we are looking to cross sell in other geographies from that and uh, second question would be that uh, in, on a steady set basis uh, what would be the optimal uh, you know uh, asset turn uh, which could be expected from a business like at this scale thank you Rishika, do you want to take both these questions? Uh, <clears throat> so, CSS, uh, in spite of this uh, COVID pandemic in Italy, uh, had a fairly uh, encouraging, uh, in fact, they posted the revenue growth. Their core fragrance business is uh, uh, pretty much same like SH Kelkar's uh, fragrance business, clocking 18-20% EBITDA margin. Uh, uh coming back to uh, cross selling opportunities i would request uh, irar to take those in terms of specific plans or specific time wise but sure there are synergies uh, but i would request irar to take that coming to the asset term uh, we really are done with all our capex uh, in last couple of years we also had to invest fair amount to relocate our plant from netherlands so i would assume that with capex done and we looking to drive the growth going forward from the current lows uh, we expect our asset turn to reach close to 2 but it will be over next couple of years i would request kedar to comment on uh, the specific other things just additional what was the revenue uh, for the cfs this time in a fight anti So uh, when you say FY20, if you are referring to quarter one, because they follow yeah, quarter right. two. Yeah. So uh, in uh, Q1, it was uh, roughly eight and half million euros. Okay. Okay, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Here are one to be two. Yeah. Just on the cross selling, I have already alluded to that earlier. We have. Uh, various products some products uh, which we have ready from fabric uh, technologies and air care technologies which they have which we are cross selling into asia so yes there are opportunities for cross selling uh, at this time we are uh, in the midst of the covid crisis and uh, we are actually exploring uh, cross uh, operations opportunities as well where certain customers of ours could be serviced out of italy Uh, as you all know that italy had a very bad uh, impact of the uh, pandemic but uh, it is also uh, ahead of the uh, curve and they have started seeing uh, steep declines in the number of cases and uh, so on and so forth and we returning to more normal uh, operations and we could use italian plant to offset some of our production challenges at this time so right now we are not looking to uh, maximize on new product sales there is a huge potential of uh, cross selling products in both the countries uh, both the regions but at this moment we are also excited about the uh, opportunities on the operational uh, uh, addition to our uh, portfolio that we have an alternative production site to service particularly in the middle east and africa where the logistic time is about the same as from india Uh, okay when so one more question sir uh, on the uh, uh, um, uh, growth guidance uh, for fy21 for both the fragrances and uh, you know flavors business and and on the raw material price volatility side given that you know the whole world is impacted by this pandemic so this again some kind of raw material uh, pricing uh, which could impact the cost margin going ahead because in, in the last couple of quarters it has started improving so just wanted to know on that front so one is yeah, the growth side the, yeah. the gross margin uh, sort of historically we had uh, around the 45% gross margin level we had lost some of that in the uh, hyper inflation post the force major and uh, closing of plants in china and so on and so forth in 2018 uh, i believe that uh, we are now on the other side of the pendulum that things uh, in terms of supply will get easy and we will end up with a normal uh, buying pattern normal prices in the rest of the year going forward okay and on the growth side in side of both the businesses on a company level basis sir any any rough 
small part figure that you have like internal measures for the growth guidance for the year for, uh, for this year uh, i think the opportunities are very high i think i wouldn't want to commit what will be the eventual growth rate because we still have a very uncertain climate over the production over how the uh, things will pan out in the next 2 3 months uh once we have a normal uh, operations maybe it is a better time we can give some guidance on the demand and our uh, run rate going forward so i i would not uh, want to uh, commit any growth rate today in this market and this mm-hmm. scenario we have strong demand uh, so there is no problem on the demand side our customers fmcg companies are operating we have good orders coming in it is a question of uh, how we are able to service the orders with the people movement logistics uh, difficulties at the moment i would just add that within the uh, country we are amongst the uh, maybe the only or one of the few people who have a high automation level in the manufacturing in their fragrance and uh, particularly in the fragrance side and this would enable us to uh, operate at a much faster uh, if once things resume so there is a i would expect a post the opening of the market a peak demand some of the smaller players and smaller customers who have not been buying would start to buy and we have enough or more capacity within our plants to allow us to expand our production capability to meet this peak surge so i believe that we are very well placed both for material uh, capacity of production and financial strength of the uh, company to take any opportunities that come our way uh, but i wouldn't uh, wouldn't guess what will be the quantum of volume uptake or value increase uh, excepting that uh, we are well placed to take the opportunities as they come okay very helpful thank you sir thank you The next question is from the line of Chirag Bhatti from HCSC Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, so thank you for the opportunity. So, can you comment on the FY20 volume value uh, split for overall sales and also in general the pricing trend for both your ingredient business and the formulation business? So, Jen, uh, i will answer the second question first uh, the general trend for the pricing the ingredient uh, pricing has come down the the corresponding gross margin of fragrances has gone up so net to net for us we will still be in the 43 44% gross margin for the coming year so there is no real impact of uh, the entire uh, gross margin change we would see some impact on the uh, global uh, sales of the uh, certain products with the demand of fine fragrances being less so we would have some impact of that in terms of uh, last year volume and uh, value i, I think uh, we should can't you have the exact numbers unfortunately uh, with the work from home i don't have that data with me but we can send it out uh, to you yeah okay sir and sir uh, there was a view that you know post uh, shifting to uh, shipping the netherlands facility to india there will be opex saving uh, there was a number you had indicated some 10 or 12 crores how much of that has been you know realized in F- or is in the base in, in fy20 so uh, it has been realized over the last 2 years we are already brought down our operating costs and uh, employee costs to the corresponding levels uh, roughly uh, 12 crores uh, or the reduction from the levels of 2 years 3 uh, years ago when we were operating our netherlands plant Uh, you can already see some impact of that through the employee cost reduction and we will keep seeing that in the uh, way forward um, i i mean we have we have uh, not uh, specific uh, working on the uh, netherlands movement to uh, to mahar we can make that and send it to you uh, the uh, but we have uh, just to say that we have completed our objectives in uh, line in budget and we have been able to produce uh, with the full capacity of the plant in the past couple of uh, quarters and the costs are very much in line with what we had planned so i i think we would have realized the entire uh, 2 million savings across this uh, plant shifting uh, 
but it would not hit you in one year because the plant closure was happening in phases and the plant restart was happening in phases but if you look at let's say 2017 number to a 2021 number we will see that uh, pretty difference uh, of 2 billion savings so in fi 20 full potential of the 12 crores has not been realized is what you are indicating no it has been realized it is not year on year realization so on 18 also 2018 we have 19 we have realized something 20 we have realized something entire 20 million is not, uh, 2 million is not in fi 20 Okay, so some bit of that will still spill over in FI twenty. Yeah, some bit of that has come in twenty, some bit of that has come in nineteen, and some bit of that will come in twenty one because we are phasing out and closing. So it's not like it has stopped and one day and started on second day. So there has been phased closure, there has been a phased uh, manufacturing increase. So all all that entire two million is spread over these three financial years in terms of the savings. Understood. And can you quantify the R and D spend in full year of FI twenty and FI nineteen? Yes, we can. Yeah. So uh, R and D spend in our context, so we spent roughly fifty fifty five crores this year. Uh, versus uh, last year, it uh, it had it's more or less comparable, although this is a little bit more. Uh, but going forward, it will stabilize. So 50, 55 crores, and like you indicated, that between amortization and capitalization, broadly the cash flow element is also similar to the uh, PNL element. Yes. Yeah, so last year, this year we had around the 55 crores, and uh, there is not really much difference if you look at capitalized or actual cash expense. It's around the 55 crore level itself. We have further reduced our uh, expenditure on basic research in the Netherlands in the third quarter last year, post the closure of the full plant there. Uh, so that will that will uh, bring down further the cost of the uh, R&D for this year. Uh, we are also plans uh, some of which are uh, partly implemented where we bring down the R&D cost further by five to seven crores for this year. Many of our longer-term projects, given the current pandemic, we will uh, not be funding those in this year. So we, we anticipate uh, five to ten crore additional reduction in the uh, R&D expenditure in this year. Understood. And Kedar, uh, you indicated that the demand environment seems uh, reasonable. Uh, uh, while there are some, there may be some COVID-related supply issues. But when you think of the business, uh, do you think you know in the past you've commented about a hundred crore kind of cash flow, uh, free cash flow from the business? Uh, that number is something that uh, you know FI twenty one can uh, reach. Uh, it is anybody's guess how the uh, because major part of our uh, cash flow coming from operations in India. So by the time uh, if we if we assume that we have a normal uh, Scenario of uh, operations and demand and logistics. I think uh, reaching 100 crore cash flow is quite uh, within the uh, budget that we have. But I wouldn't want to comment and speculate anything for this year till we have some level of normal uh, operations. Understood. And this is the last question, if I can. Uh, you said Jan and February, Feb were good year, good months for you, but March seemed to be uh, having some impact. Uh, uh, in the yes, past, last, said, last ten days of March, we had no impact on demand. It was a strong month, as uh, every year the last quarter is a strong quarter. We were seeing very good demand. We had uh, more than 35, 40 crores of open orders at the time the lockdown was uh, announced. Uh, so we have lost. Uh, Roughly, we anticipate or estimate roughly 30 odd crores for the end of March, and we would have closed on a 305 odd crore uh, or 303 odd crore uh, revenue for the for the fourth quarter. So we are already through two months, April and May. How have the past two months been? So uh, I think April has been uh, we were uh, close, like I mentioned earlier, till uh, uh, almost the first part of uh, or. 23rd of April, almost all the plants were uh, operating marginally. Uh, we started to operate some of the plants in end April, some of the plants in end uh, or beginning of May, 
only on the 17th of may we have started all our plants uh, in some level of operations i would say 40 50% in total so uh, we are uh, able to generate revenue only after the 15th of 14th of may and as we speak we have covered uh, i think roughly 50 crores of revenue for these two months uh, but that's basically 15 days of uh, operations in reality cumulatively you are saying 50 crores that has been uh, like yeah around the 50 crore till as uh, till the 22nd of may so the last three four days again there would have been some sales but till the 22nd of may we have cumulative roughly 50 crores of sales uh, some of the i mean this is basically almost like uh, 15 days of production which is where we are uh, gather we have enough orders in hand after we have started supplying the order pipeline is strong and we will catch up and uh, it's very fluid situation so it can change on day to day week to week but i think we are progressively increasing our production output and we should be a fairly normal output by end of june thank you thank you so much thank you The next question is from the line of Vikram Kota from Landstone. Please go ahead. Yeah, I have two questions. One is the uh, your net debt level. If I if I'm correct, you mentioned two eighty crore, right? On thirty first March two thousand twenty. Is that a correct number? I think two ninety nine crore. Two nine. Okay, three hundred crore. So, uh, what 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 what's the target in next two three years? Because since you have a strong cash flow and you reduce the debt uh, this year as well. how do you see maybe in a couple of years time where do you see a debt level going to be again uh, we would continue to uh, reduce the debt level with the cash flow uh, approximately uh, i mean in a normal year 100 and 120 crores of the cash flow is what we are generating uh, we will look at uh, the second part of the acquisition of the italian uh, uh, subsidiary uh, now and after that uh, we will uh, hopefully uh, our target is to maintain the debt level 300 or below and uh, continue to operate like this okay and second question uh, you know life post covid for uh, you as organization uh, in terms of business processes or in terms of uh, you know employee in terms of research is any any major change for you uh, post covid uh, opportunity wise or even processes wise any anything you think so a learning or maybe a, what you're trying to kind of improve upon or just just want your feedback on that uh principally uh, nothing much will change for us we will look at obviously uh, we have been doing some work from home at this period and we will assess if some of the operations or some of the uh, things can be done from home or uh, you know break up the uh, entire teams into sub teams and you know work from different locations that's the kind of thing which will happen but on the product side on the operation side because we have to actually work with the product smell and taste the product there is no alternative but to run in the current way right right and geography wise also no change you will mention the same geography uh, uh, distribution of your sales more or less yes uh, i think geography wise we will continue in southeast asia india africa and uh, now with the european acquisition we will enter yeah. to south europe right. right thank you very much thank you the next question is from the line of lakshmi narayan from ics at prudential please go ahead. hi it is a couple of questions uh, first is If you look at your Indian business, approximately, uh, um, you know, if you look at your you know, Australian business, and then you look at India, it's close to around six, seven, eight crores, uh, right? Uh, and and we used to categorize into multiple uh, segments in terms of uh, uh, the uh, the regional players and the retail uh, as well as uh, uh, national players, right? What what's the kind of broad cut uh, uh, for for that entity? Uh, so FY20 uh, basically the cut remains the same. The top large customers are uh, roughly 40% of the domestic sale. The next one is 30%. Uh, 10% are the mid-size or regional ones, and 10% has been our retail. Uh, uh, retail. So that's that's kind of the 
but uh, I, I would say that in terms of the final revenue in March, uh, the cut was a little different because some of the bigger orders could not go in time. But if, if I look at the actual demand point of view, we have roughly 45%, 46% from the large customers, 35% from the mid, and the smaller ones uh, have reduced from 10 to maybe 7% for the year. Got it. Okay. And the domestic thing, which is around 45%, right, which are the large, uh, 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 large FMCG firms, uh, uh, what has been your market share of it been growing with them uh, in the last couple of years? So, yes, we have uh, multiple, uh, so all our large clients, we have done excess of 15% growth in the last two years. Uh, we have, uh, correspondingly, last year we had degrowth on the smaller clients. This year, the base of the smaller clients was already adjusted. So, if you see that we have continued to grow, uh, had, it, uh, had it not been for the COVID, we would have registered a double digit growth for the year. And, and if I look at uh, the fragrance business for the last five years, uh, you know, looking from FI 16 to say FI 20, right? Uh, the point to point increase in the fragrance business has been uh, around 3%, and whereas the operating margin uh, has actually grown 1% uh, over a five year period, right? So, uh, what it would take for, for us to go back to the FI 15 16 times where there were at least on the upper, uh, upper single digits or even a double digit growth, right? Uh, because it's been something I'm sure you will not see. Uh, the scenario. Uh, on the entire basis, so we, we look at the churn, the repositioning of the products in the exports and the effect of the GST demonetization force measure in the last two, three years. I think we have now faced with COVID, of course, but the underlying demand and the uh, areas where we are operating and our research has been giving us a strong pipeline of new wins with the large customers, with size customers, all of them. Uh, we have had these specific challenges in the last two, three years because we have continued also to invest heavily in the research. Uh, with the uh, scenario around COVID, now we will uh, undertake to uh, cut down our longer term research programs and uh, focus more on the next one or two years of uh, business. So I think you will see a very quick uh, improvement in the uh, pass through from the revenue and gross margin to the uh, PAD CBT line. Uh, in, in terms of uh, our spend on research coming down and our overall uh, operating margins uh, kind of improving as we uh, have a higher volume base on the same uh, cost of operations. And then one last question is that uh, if I just uh, let's suppose uh, our domestic fragrance numbers concerning the Indian uh, FRTV industry in terms of volume terms, right, uh, or in terms of revenue terms, uh, we seem to be growing lower than the industry, right? But you're saying that uh, you're actually increasing wallet share in the larger clients. Right? So what explains that difference? I think the typical SMCG that uh, that you look at the organized data and you compare with the organized data, there is a I estimated earlier around 30% or 25% in fragrance of unorganized market which typically does not get tracked in the FMCG reports or investors' discussion because they are all very small companies across the country. Uh, with the GST and demonetization part of those have degrown. So if you look at the, uh, I mean, if, we, if you look at any of the uh, comparable FMCG companies, volume growth uh, and our growth with them, Accepting few companies like Unilever that are present in their portfolio is small. Uh, I think everywhere else uh, our portfolio of products has grown at the same rate or faster than their overall reported uh, growth rate. So we have grown with their customers. Our products have grown faster in their portfolio of products. The, uh, the uh, reality has been that some of the, the growth has come at the expense of some of our smaller brands and regional brands across the country. So we have seen three to four percent growth last year and roughly double digit growth this year, uh, largely because we have done still the 15 percent on the larger customers, but we have looked at a degrowth situation last year and this year we have no degrowth of the smaller clients. 
And what is the, you you give a blended uh, operating margin of the fragrance business, right? So if if you actually look at the uh, Indian and the uh, non-Indian, what would have been what would be the mix of uh, what what would be the operating margin difference? Vikas, do you want to answer that? Operating so, margin uh, of domestic and operating margin of uh, export fragrance. Fragrance. So uh, there is not a large difference, uh, Mr. Lakshmi Narayan. Uh, of course, there are some uh, changing patterns uh, because of the effect rate uh, movements, but uh, broadly they are comparable margin. So we have recorded around 12 percent uh, on an operating margin, and uh, we think that that would be broadly same between India and, and international. uh yes if you are referring to the segment operating margin slide yes yeah. uh, this is i'm just doing 119 divided by 998 yes and and if you go back to fi 17 and 18 it was around 15% and it has actually come down to 12% uh is it uh, uh, uh is it i mean how much you attribute this to to raw materials so that there is a clear basic point difference From FI 1718 to now, right? And how much you would attribute to something else? Uh, I would attribute uh, of this uh, 300 basis points, you know, just roughly 200 basis points to raw material cost situation because it's only now that we are able to have stable RM prices and therefore more stable gross margin. So of that remaining. Uh, And the basis point out of that change would be for other expenses, and we have also been working on cost optimization. So that we brought it. I would give. There have been uh, some one-offs in this year as well, as we have taken some uh, redundancies and uh, plant closures. So there have been some one-off expenses in that as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anshu Sahib from Kota C N. Please go ahead. All the participants are requested to limit their questions to two participants. If time permits, and each one the question is one for all. Thank you. Please go ahead, Mr. Sahib. Thank you. Um, I just want to know, uh, carrying on from the previous question, where uh, the margins have contracted in the standalone business meaningfully over the last five six years. uh i think they've contracted from as much as 20% to now about 11% uh what is that on the account of um and you refer to r&d as a proportion of sales actually contracting um how much was it uh, then and how much is it now as a proportion of sales and so if it contracts where can we see margin say in the next 2 3 years that's one and the second is that uh I noticed that uh, our revenue growth has been somewhere in the region of uh, say five to ten percent, uh, compounded over the last five six years. And you uh, referred to the um, the strengths that the company has, being in business ninety five years and having a portfolio of uh, of products, etc. Now, why is it that that strength is not getting translated into better growth? Is it because of industry growing at slower pace, or uh, or some other uh, aspects which uh, which we don't understand? Um, I'll uh, I'll appreciate if you can address these. Okay, so I uh, I remember the last two questions which I will answer. The first one, if you would uh, if you can repeat, I will take it up later. on the r&d we have roughly 55 crores uh, of uh, uh, expenses uh, last year the similar level of expense this year and uh, we've already taken certain amount of uh, redundancy certain amount of uh, r&d closures in the netherlands uh, we are also looking at further optimizing the r&d spend across the uh, Uh, across the company for the uh, you know looking at the current demand and uh, operating environment so i i think that's a lever which is within our control to uh, decrease or increase on a longer term basis we have always been maintaining 3 to 4% of the sales as our target r&d uh, and trying to uh, grow at uh, 12 to 14% in the market environment particularly in india in the last 2 3 years has been much poorer industry growth i, I suspect that the last 3 years the industry growth would have been in 3 to 4% but 
majority of which has been taken by the larger players where we also seen uh, growth for us our churn of products in terms of uh, export was uh, where we had uh, due to the force major certain products which we uh, exited the, the margins were lower particularly on the flavors as well and so we have um, planned and exited uh, roughly 50 odd crore of revenue in the last 2 3 years so if you look at our 5 to 6% uh, growth we have also uh, churned the growth to better margin products uh, and uh, the scenario with the raw material and scenario with the uh, overall picture the gross margin could have been much worse uh, so we have adjusted the business to have lower growth less credit risk and better margin which is a sustainable longer term business than uh, trying to grow at 10% with uh, longer credit terms and uh, much poorer or worsening quality of business so yes it has been challenging uh, but our focus has been to ensure that we have a, a good uh, a good focus on the uh, correct kind of quality business that gives us year on year growth uh the first my question you had uh, asked i did not uh, uh, yes my question was that um you uh, in previously in the call you mentioned that um, uh, being in business 95 years you have a whole uh, array of products also an understanding of local markets etc now uh, if that is the case uh, why is it that our growth has been uh, on a compounded basis 5 to 10% and then of course uh, there has been that kicker of uh, acquisition but uh, why has organic growth been 5 to 10% is it because of industry growing slower or uh, or some other aspect yeah so the industry as a whole was growing much slower in the last 3 4 years in the domestic market uh, when you look at the larger players and the reported uh, numbers of fmcg and so on so forth i think the uh, data and we monitor this data on a regular basis to ac nielsen and euro monitor and others we typically cover only 80% of the market there is a 20% to 25% market below this 80% which is tracked by any kind of uh, data tracking so there is a lot of uh, small players in uh, parts of different parts of the country and uh, those are really not tracked as a consumption or fmcg post the gst particularly uh, i think a lot of these players had a, a very big competition and we seen two or three uh, quarters of large growth for companies like you know unilever even has reported quarter on quarter 11% volume growth which means that a lot of that is market share which has gone from our customers to uh, the likes of unilever in and godrej and mummy and other large players so there has been a churn for us uh, particularly we have lost market share as the presence in uh, the global mnc brands was uh, much lower uh, we haven't grown at uh, the same pace as what what otherwise we would have uh, if i may just squeeze in one small question again um, if, if that is the case um, are these mnc players procuring from international competition uh, with whom they have uh, tie ups internationally or are there the local competitors who are uh, what no, they are in- they are buying from the international players who they have lo- local tie ups and what is the hindrance in us to gain market share there? nothing just matter of time okay in cost it should be cheaper than this competition and in quality similar uh so i wouldn't comment that as a broad based uh, better and worse i think we have our strengths they have their strengths in certain segments they are better in certain types of products they are better so each each company has its unique strengths and weaknesses so by and large uh, we are uh, in the same bracket to compete i don't see anything that we cannot offer as a deficient uh, yes we don't have the uh, breadth of uh, global presence uh, or the uh, kind of manufacturing in various locations and so on and so forth uh, but we are supplementing that with a better understanding of local uh, local trends so thank you thank you, thank you.
Next question is from the line of Anupam Agarwal from Lucky Investment. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, my first question is basically you mentioned about your overall utilization and plans right now at about 50%. Uh, so, sir, uh, question is what was this percentage pre-COVID and uh, what is the peak uh, optimal utilization for our kind of industry? So generally, uh, our industry does not measure uh, output on the basis of capacity constraint because there is you know, not a uh, lot of capacity constraint as a driver. They are not normally fully automated plants where you have a defined capacity. So typically, there is a big uh, leeway on what is the capacity utilization and what is the final revenue based on the type of product per kilo, cost of the product, and the size of the bag, and so on and so forth. Uh, for our product mix, what we are offering, we were typically operating our, all our plants at uh, basically around the 50% average, and on the formulations plant, around the 40-45% average for the uh, manufacturing. Uh, we had a capacity and have a capacity with additional shifts, with additional uh, basis to quickly double the output uh, in a short short span of time. Uh, I think at, at this moment with the COVID uh, scenario, we are half of our normal operating. So we would say 25 or 30 percent of the full capacity of the plant, 50 percent of the normal operating capacity of the plant. Right. So on peak, we would be able to do 80, 90 percent? Uh, in terms of uh, what we call surge demand, if we have uh, demand in uh, excess of the normal average, we can uh, pick up the uh, production for a period of time and even double or triple, triple the output for a couple of months uh, in in a normal basis. Right. So without too much expense or anything. So uh, my question was coming from uh, the side that you mentioned about your asset terms being 2x. So at what level of utilization is this 2x uh, target that you are uh, alluding to? Okay, so uh, I understand the question. The, the thing is that the capacity utilization is not linear in terms of revenue. Okay. Right, so we typically see 15%, 18% extra capacity gives us double the revenue because of uh, value addition uh, over a period of time, the average selling price and the kind of product, premium products are more. Uh, so it's not directly linear to the capacity utilization, but just to say that we have enough capacity that if the revenue started to be, uh, you know, we have doubled the revenue and doubled the production capacity required, we don't need to invest anything for, for taking that uh, business. Right. And so secondly, uh, so this is just a clarification, you talked about 50 crores of revenue is what you've done in the uh, quarter one, right, till today. That's right. Right. And you also mentioned about uh, 30 crores of sales, which is, which uh, did not happen in the last 15 days of March. So yes. are, those, are those 30 crore sales lost or are they deferred? Uh, so most of those sales are deferred because they are not uh, seasonal products. Maybe two three crores of that will be it, uh, will be lost for this year. They will come back in the uh, later part of the year, maybe fourth quarter. So uh, maybe two crores of the thirty crores is lost. Twenty eight to 20, thirty crores. Uh, I mean, almost all of that is uh, deferred. So as does as that customers come back? They will require those products. So is that 27 crores included in the 50 crores or is it separate to 50 crores? 50 crores no, is separate? Uh, no, it's not included in the 50 crores. Maybe some of that has already moved. I don't have a split, but my guesstimate is around 10 to 12 crores of the 30 has moved. Okay. 17, 18 crores of the 30 has not yet moved. Okay. As those customers are not yet uh, operating in any meaningful way. Right, right, right. And sir, uh, just on the order book visibility, if you can give some color and sense of how is it looking or how is it shaping up for the second half of this year or till December, uh, that would be great, sir. I mean, in, 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 uh, from the demand side, uh, what, what is, how, how, uh, how green so I, I think the demand side for us uh, will increase uh, more than the last year's. Uh, I, I think that overall across the board there will be 8 to 10% additional demand. 
given that uh, some of our competitors are also unable to service their uh, clients and most of even the larger competitors we are seeing uh, demand coming back to us or moving to us so i think the demand is not only the total demand i think we will be in a good position this year to also take some market share from uh, from the from the competition right so this 10% uh, we have uh, also roughly uh, 50 crores of new wins uh, clocked for this year so which have annualized potential to be 70 80 crores of new revenue for the coming year uh, i will just put a caveat of subject to uh, covid because we don't know uh, how many uh, how much of that business we can regularly service but we have a strong pipeline of new wins of 50 plus crores as we get into the into the uh, 2021 year thank you mr agarwal the question which on the question to for any follow thank you the next question is from the line of krishna patoria from motilal also please go ahead. hi okay the question is sir uh i want to check if you could tell us uh, hello yeah can you hear me yeah we can hear you go ahead yeah sorry uh, what contribution of fragrance comes from skin care and cosmetics uh this that segment so skin care and cosmetics is a small part of the uh, fragrance business uh, in general i would and sort of look at uh, 3 to 4% of the total revenue uh, is the category is uh, very large in uh, value terms but volume terms with fairly small levels of uh, fragrance usage in that category when you talk about skin care now uh, products that are skin cleaning so like hand wash body wash these we typically add into personal wash so when we say skin care all lotion cream uh, lotion yeah perfect perfect so that's yeah. a small uh, product got it value and uh, yeah and the, the other thing i wanted to ask uh, you know if possible which is you know if i could take you back to jan feb uh, and you know what would be your 3 5 year plan uh, and uh, you know how would it look like uh, how, if you could just give us a peek into that i think uh, these are the times when uh, we are focusing our attention on making sure we are back to uh, normal operations so my, much of the attention mind space is focused on making sure we get out of this crisis strong and able to uh, run uh, the market scenario post covid will be quite different from the pre covid situation both from the kind of demand type of demand and the uh, competitive landscape uh, i believe that there will be further consolidation and further uh, scenario where the small companies through the covid may not be uh, sufficiently able to operate so we, we see that the competitive space across across the world in southeast asia middle east uh, india europe the ones who have survived through the uh, covid uh, in terms of properly able to service or better able to service will get a big jump in the market share we are well placed in that with the capacity the inventories and the strong financial position uh, we have the product pipeline from the r&d already in place so we don't have to design products for the future there almost all of them are ready at least in the prototype stage so we i think post covid we are uh, well placed to take up the opportunities as they come and we may see a phase of growth which is uh, you know restoring us back to the uh, normal double digit plus growth uh, that we we should be tracking right and can uh, i want to also check we uh, close march with about 110 days of inventory uh, so when the manufacturing facilities were uh, shut uh could you liquidate this inventory some part of it no we we did not liquidate the inventory because uh, also uh, there was uh, nobody operating so it was not that somebody else needed the inventory it was just uh, like a pause button everybody was uh, staying where they were okay and this last question uh, uh the company has about 320 crores of non rm cost as of fy20 uh how much of that uh, can be optimized uh, in in a year
here like this so we are we are looking at the various uh, cost elements in detail and uh, we are uh, planning for a 20% uh, decline and cross uh, looking at each element from a first principles what do we need what is the uh, uh, nature of the cost expense and uh, focusing on what is required and essential for next 2 3 years so all the long term projects long term uh, a proposal that we have been running as a product development or a prototyping and so on and so forth we will reduce uh, in this year thank you and best of luck thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen that was the last session for today i now hand the conference over to the management for their closing comments thank you and over to you So uh, I go in the closing comments. Yes, sir. Yes, please go. Thank on. you. I hope I, I was able to answer all your questions satisfactorily. Should you need any further clarification or like to know more about the company, please feel free to contact our team or CDR India. Thank you once again. All of you stay safe, and uh, till we speak again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of SHK Co and Company Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and we may now disconnect the line.